remember Mr. Ali's opening speech. We all link hands to protect children. Yes. Let's see you linked hands to protect Star. Holly Jones was one, wasn't she? Yes. She made a referral to social services in January. It wasn't just Star she was concerned about. There was issues in your family, but Star was at the forefront of your mind. Holly is a person who is honest, trustworthy. She can be sometimes. I trusted her with Star. Entirely well meaning so far as Star is concerned? Yes. Do you remember her saying that Star called her mum because she looked after her so much? I remember that. Do you accept her social services referral was in good faith to help Star, but it came to nothing? Yes. Anita Smith, your grandmother, you got on really well before Star was born? Yes. She's from an old generation and it isn't right, but sometimes people from that generation have a difficulty with same-sex relationship. It's wrong, but they just don't. Yes. You knew, though, that she loved Star. She did, yes. She loved you, too. Yes. But you persuaded social services that Anita's referral was malicious. That's what I thought at the time. That's what you said to them. They said it to me. You said she made the referral because of your relationship. Yes. You had a lot to do with social services, but this came to nothing as well. They closed the case without even telling Anita. Yes. Anita linked hands to protect Star. Yes. Jordan Hobson made a referral after seeing that photo of Star. Yes. I accept he didn't give you much help with Star. He went off to university and things stopped between you and he didn't see much of Star. That's right. But he did care for Star, didn't he? He cared. He made the referral in good faith too, to help Star. Now I believe that. At the time though. I thought it was because I wasn't speaking to him. He wasn't involved. I thought it was malicious. He was reaching out to try and help Star. From what I know now, yes. Natasha Maddox, you don't know her, do you? No. She was with Holly Jones by chance in August when Holly was looking after Star again and it was them who filmed Star's bruised face that day. Yes. Natasha had never met Star before, but even she was so concerned by the state of Star's face that she made a video of it and sent it to people she thought cared about Star. Yes, she sent it to my half-brother, Ben. He loved Star, dotted on her. He did, yes. Ben was another one who reached out, linked hands. Frank Smith, your grandfather, he made a social services referral based on the video. Yes. He reached out to help Star. Yes. Many of these people were members of your own family. Yes. You ignored them all, fought them off. Yes, I thought they were malicious. You fobbed off social services. At the time, I thought they were all malicious. Fact is, many people were concerned about Star's welfare. Yes. We've seen Star had bruises on her face and body repeatedly. Yes, lots of times. You were in the best position to judge how Star was. You were with her all the time apart from when she was with Savannah. Yes. This isn't just about what happened in the end, but the sheer number of injuries Star suffered in her life. Yes. All babies get bruises, crawling, walking, falling over, but the number of bruises, the places of them, you were the best person to see them, dressing and bathing her. Yes. And did you once take Star to the doctors for any injury? No. Why not? I don't know. You were her mother. Do you agree that your obligations as a mum is to look after that child, protect Star? Yes. Make sure she got every possible help to grow up in a healthy way. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. Let's just look at some photos. The photo of Star sat in her pram from September the 14th with bruises to her face and arm is shown again. That's how Star came back to you, having been with Samantha Brookhill on September the 14th. Yes. What do you say about that photo, how Star looks? She looks really bad. It's obvious now something had happened to her. Her cheeks. Is that a large, substantial bruise? Yes. Obvious damage to her nose, her face, her arm? Yes. That's just one photo. Another photo now, more bruises. Did you cause any of these? No. Are you sure about that? Look at that photo. There's multiple bruises on her face. Yes, I'm sure. Her mouth, her cheek. Above her right eye, does she look happy? No, she looks sad. Bruised, sad, broken. Yes. The next photo, your daughter on September the 15th. Had you done anything to her after Samantha Brookhill brought her back? No. How does she look there? She looks poorly. She's got red eyes. 
She's been crying her eyes out. She had conjunctivitis there. Have you ever seen a sadder picture? What did you do to help your daughter? I cuddled her in bed all morning. I got her eye drops. Why didn't you take her to the doctor? I should have done. Another photo from the 15th. Did you cause those bruises on her arm? No. Look how many there are. And on her face, her eyebrows. Who caused those bruises? Savannah. Did you have any more to do with Samantha Brookhill after that? Yes. Of course you did. You spent the night with her, with Star in that van. Yes. How can it be you spent the night of September the 17th with your daughter with the woman who you knew had caused these injuries to her? It was wrong to spend the night with her. Never mind that. Why did you spend the night with her after seeing those bruises? I don't know why. You sent a message saying you loved her. I did. After she did all this to your child, you said you loved her? Yes, I did. I was suspicious at this point. I'd not seen her do anything. Suspicious? Who else could have caused these injuries? Savannah. I was suspicious. Did it horrify you? I was suspicious. I didn't think she could have done something like that to a child. You were horrified by Star's injuries? Yes. Did you consider at all how terrifying it must have been for Star when these injuries were caused? I did. Did you think about how much being put back with the woman who caused them would upset her, terrify her? No, I didn't. The same woman who punched you in the pub, chipped your tooth, picked you up and carried you off, battered you with a shoe on your back, could lose her temper? Yes. She was obsessive and jealous? Yes. Only concerned with herself? Yes. Did you think what damage all this was doing to Star to be back in the company of that woman? And what risk you was putting her under? No, I didn't. Why were you in that van with that woman on September the 17th when she did these injuries to your child? I don't know. You loved her and wanted to be with her? To some extent, yes. You was obsessed with her? Not obsessed, but I loved her. You didn't give a moment's thought to what the effect of this would be on Star? No. I asked earlier why you never took Star to see a doctor. You see, it wasn't just a bruising, was it? I don't understand. She walked with a limp. Sometimes. You thought she had one leg shorter than the other? One of the reasons, yes. That only became apparent when she started walking. That was around her first birthday in May. There was a further reason for your concern. Ben had pervious disease, a disease of the hip in young children. Yes. The hip was a ball joint. It doesn't have proper blood supply. I don't know about it. But Ben had treatment to make sure he didn't suffer in later life. Yes. But when you thought it might be pervious, why didn't you take Star to see a doctor to ask them to look at her and why she wasn't walking properly? I don't know. Savannah says Star was petting and I believed her. It was much later when Samantha Brookhill said that thought wasn't it. This was May slash June. She said petting on September 21st. Yes. You can't just blame Samantha Brookhill for that. This is much earlier when you saw the limp. You said in a number of messages, Star cried when you touched her leg. Yes, she did. Why didn't you take Star to a doctor to be looked at? I don't know why I didn't. I should have done. Is the reason you didn't was because you knew you and Samantha Brookhill had been abusing Star and you were fearful the doctors would realise and take her away? No. So what is the reason? Like I said, from what Savannah was saying, she said it then too and I believed her. That's not true, is it? It is. You are capable of forming judgments yourself, independently minded. Was Samantha Brookhill saying to you on your evidence, don't take her to the doctor? I don't know at that point. Have a think. Savannah would say Star was petting, pretending. You're just telling lies, aren't you? No. Nope. Your mum Yvonne said you didn't want to take Star to the doc because you were worried they'd take her away from you. Is that right? It was when she had the bruising. She had bruising because you had been abusing her? No, I didn't. You left Star with Samantha Brookhill over the weekend. Where was she taking her? To work. To her home, where she had nice things to play with. She took her there a couple of times, but when it was overnight, she took Star to work. Sometimes Samantha Brookhill took her overnight to her own home. I think that only happened once. She wasn't doing that when she took her to work, though. No. Some images now of this recycling plant. Aerial images of the plant in Doncaster. You know what it was like. You've been there. Yes. Star will be taken by Samantha Brookhill to this recycling plant. Yes. It's not a nice place. It's not attractive, is it? No. She'll be cooped up in the car overnight and for long periods in the day. Yes. Would you be in the slightest bit surprised if a little girl of that age got a bit difficult cooped up in a car on a hot day? No. 
What did she have to keep her entertained? There were some toys in the car. Some toys, that's it. If you were looking after a child in a car for a long time, and we know one of these weekends it was boiling hot, very unpleasant, any carer would have to try to be really nice to the child, make it as nice as possible. Yes. Even then though, the child would have trouble. Yes. Why was Samantha Brookhill taking Star off to the recycling plant near Doncaster? Sometimes she wanted to have Star or I'd gone with them too sometimes. But on her own? Sometimes I'd be going out. Star was going off to this plant so you could go out to the pub over the weekend with your mum and friends and get drunk. Yes. Did you ever think that's not a nice thing for Star, being stuck in a car for hours and hours on end? I didn't think of it that way. Did it never cross your mind or were you just not bothered? I was bothered. She was my baby. So why did you? So you could go out drinking subject Star to that? I don't know. I was wrong. You were only bothered about your own enjoyment? No, I was was bothered about Star. Why did Samantha Brookhill want her when she was a security guard on a recycling plant? Why didn't you ask her why she wanted Star when she was working? Savannah asked to have her and I let her. What did you think Samantha Brookhill wanted your daughter for, knowing she'd be working as a guard on a recycling plant? To spend time with her. Doing what? I don't know, watching movies, sitting on the phone with her. How old was Star? One. That's what Samantha Brookhill told you? Yes. We'll come back to that, but I'm going to move on now. Do you remember when I opened the case, spoke about Samina Begum? Yes. I said she was a social worker. She worked for the housing association which owned your flat. Yes. Do you remember our Raf Ali standing in for Mrs. Begum, who was off work? Yes. So when we see references to Miss Begum, it's actually Mr. Ali and it wasn't a social worker. He's a housing support officer and I apologise for getting that wrong at the beginning of the trial. Yes. You repeatedly tried to stop Mr. Ali from seeing Star. Not seeing Star, no. Do you agree that Mr. Ali repeatedly tried to get in touch with you for a visit to the flat? Yes, we had to do paperwork. Wanted to help you and make sure you had all your benefits and any issues with the flat? Yes. It was an appointment set up for the day Star died. Oh God, there could have been. I suggest you repeatedly made excuses to prevent this meeting from happening. This isn't the first time Mr. Ali tried to speak to you. You said, sorry, going to have to cancel. I've been throwing up all night. You hadn't been though, had you? I believe I had been throwing up. The next day, Samantha Brookhill comes and collects Star and you ask her permission to go out. Samantha Brookhill had Star that weekend so you could go out and get drunk. Yes. This is September the 19th. You had flaming rows with Samantha Brookhill during the relationship. Yes. Star had been repeatedly bruised. She had, yes. When she got back from being with Samantha Brookhill in July. Yes. Look at what she said to you. You let her get away with too much. She's a very, very nasty and naughty child. And I don't like them ways. Did you think Star was very, very nasty? No. Did you think that was a terrible way to refer to your daughter? Yes, it was. She might have had tantrums, but all children have tantrums. It's part of the process of a child developing. Yes, it is. It's something parents have to manage and try to help the child through. Yes. But Samantha Brookhill wasn't like that. She just called her a very, very nasty child. Yes. Yes, she said her tantrums weren't normal. As if it was all Star's fault, as if she was deliberately doing it. Yes. By this stage, you knew Star had been bruised repeatedly, and by this point, she had a fractured leg and was about to be refractured. She had fractures to her ribs. Do you think when you look at all these videos of Star, don't you think what is striking about them is she is always upset, crying? She's crying, yes. You've heard children cry. Did you not think after hearing Star all these times it was a cry of pain? At the time, no. Now, yes. I suggest this is a child who is suffering. Did you not know that? Not at the time, no. Samantha Brookhill also said she was a naughty child, was she? No, she was just normal. When Samantha Brookhill sent you that message, do you think that was fair? I'm not getting myself worked up when you're not bothered. No, it wasn't very fair. Which bit of it isn't fair? When she says I wasn't bothered. Miss Goddard showed that video of Star crawling up the stairs. Star was whimpering, crying. She was crying, yes. She found it tough getting up those stairs. Looking now, it was. 
You weren't even looking at her at the time. You were on your phone. You weren't bothered. I was bothered about Star. Don't you think Samantha Brookhill had a point when she said you're not bothered? No, I was bothered about Star. Don't you think someone seeing that video would say yes, you're not bothered? Looking at it now, yes. Then Samantha Brookhill says she'll wreck your life. She's a brat who thinks nothing of you. Was Star a brat? No. What was your reaction to getting that text? I kind of just brushed it off as I knew Star wasn't. What did you think of the person making these comments? Not a very nice person. They were horrid, awful things to say about your little daughter. Yes. It continued in the same sort of way. Samantha Brookhill said no one will ever last with you with her life she is. What does that mean? That no one will ever last with me. With a brat like that, a very nasty, naughty child, no one will look at you. Yes. You say you would find someone, Samantha Brookhill says. I hope you do, but not with that child. Did that hurt? Did you think she was right? No, everybody loves my star. Did you think to yourself, when these horrible things had been said, and I'm just looking at star here, she said some awful things to you and your family, calling you tramps and a lower class than her. Did that hurt? Was that a wicked thing to say? Yes. But what matters here is what she said about Star. When she said those horrible things, did you not think I'm not going anywhere near this horrible woman ever again? I didn't think that. I thought she was doing it to try and hurt me. She said terrible things about your lovely Star. Did you not think it doesn't matter what I think about her? I'm having nothing to do with someone who speaks about my daughter like that. No. You didn't do that. Look at what happened next. You said, are you having Star on Friday or not? Yes. What did you do about who was having Star? If she wouldn't, okay, Becky will have her. Yes. Oh, don't worry, if you won't have her, I'll farm her off to Becky. Becky would babysit, yes. By this time, Star had come back from Samantha Brookhill, bruised, injured, unhappy, crying. Yes. She said these wicked things about Star shortly before this. Yes. And you said, are you having Star on Friday or what? What on earth were you doing putting Star in the company of this woman who just called her a brat and had it bruised and injured her? I don't know. Maybe Samantha Brookhill was right when she said you weren't bothered. You weren't. You'd farm her off to anyone including this woman who's calling her a brat and a very, very nasty and naughty child. You didn't worry at all. Yes, I did. So why did you try and put her in the company of Samantha Brookhill? I don't know. Think about it and tell us. I don't know. I was wrong. I should never have done it. It's easy to say that now. I'm asking you why you did it. And I say you just wanted to go out and get drunk and not having a worry about Star. I was bothered. I did like to go out. But I was interested in Star when, yes. But I was wrong to let Savannah have her. When these nasty things were being said September the 19th, let's see a photo from that time. The photo is on screen. It shows Star with a bruise to her cheek on September the 15th. These words were four days after these pictures were taken. That's the little person Samantha Brookhill called a brat, a very nasty child. Yes. But the next day you were ready to put the little girl in the hands of Samantha Brookhill. Yes. The only time Star was taken to see a doctor when police took you to the hospital after Jordan's social services referral. Yes. When Star had been killed, you surely wanted to help police in every way to find the cause of why your daughter had died. Yes. That involved telling them the truth of what happened. Yes. So why did you lie to them? I don't know. I was wrong to do so. You said you weren't protecting anyone, were you? No, I wasn't. I would say the only reason someone would tell lies then is because they had something to hide. I had nothing to hide. So why did you lie? Because Savannah told me to. You agreed a mother is the most important person in a baby's life to care for and protect them. Yes. And you say you have nothing to hide? I don't. But you've had experience of looking after babies. Yes, but not on my own. It's fair to say at first there were problems with Star. She was tongue-tied. Yes, and she had a lot of acid reflux. So you were in hospital for a period and then everything was sorted? Yes. Then you went back to Yvonne's house and almost straight away you asked her to do the night's feed. She helped me. You were happier to do the easier things with Star, dressing her up, she had nice clothes. Yes. But being a mother is hard work, it requires a lot of sacrifice. Getting up when you're tired to feed, changing nappies, confronting crying babies, and when you just want to sleep yourself, it greatly reduces the time you have to yourself if you do it properly. Yes. Doing it properly means not going to the pub so much. Yes. 
you quickly became bored of doing the hard work, didn't you? I didn't get bored. I had a lot of help, though. You wanted to go out drinking. You were only young yourself. Yes, I'd only just turned 18 after Star. You went to Bridlington when Star was only four months old. Yes. All the glitz of a newborn had worn off by then. No. Is that why Holly was doing all the care for her while you went out drinking? She cared for her some of the time. She helped. It was after the holiday you split up. Around that time, yes. There was an accident in Samantha Brookhill's car where you had brought food for yourself and Holly was feeding Star some of her food in the back of the car. Star accidentally bit her and Holly cried out in pain. Do you remember? Yes, vaguely. Samantha Brookhill turned round and said, What are you going to do about that? And Holly said you bit Star's finger so hard it left a mark and she cried. And you said, that will teach you for biting people. I don't remember that happening. Why would Holly lie about that? I don't know. Times in the pub where Star was sent to the wall. Was that in Weatherspoons? There's so many pubs in Shipley I can't remember. When she didn't eat her food and had blisters in her mouth. It was Savannah who did that. Did you think that was right? Looking back now, no. Did you not think it was a terrible thing to do? Yes. Why didn't you say it to Samantha Brookhill? I don't know why I didn't. We heard that even before you met Samantha Brookhill, you were out most weekends with Yvonne. It wasn't most weekends, but I went out a bit. Getting home between midnight and 4am. Sometimes your mum didn't even make it back. Yes, that's right. You were happy to leave Star with her. Yes. Before you even met Samantha Brookhill, Holly said there was a change in Star. She'd been a happy, bubbly baby, but from October to November, after the trip to Brid, all that changed. No. David and Anita told us Star was a lovely baby, easy to deal with. Yes. If she did something she shouldn't do, they just told her to stop. Yes. Holly said she was lovely too. Yes. That's a big contrast, isn't it? Anita said when Star was with her, she was really happy. That's a contrast to how she looks in the photos and videos we've seen of her crying. What does contrast mean? Very different. Oh, yes. So there wasn't nothing nasty or naughty about her. She had tantrums, but nothing out of the ordinary. Holly said Star was on newborn milk until eight months. Star was on acid reflux milk. She was on follow-on milk. Holly said her mother had to buy Star the right milk. You would prop the bottle up while she was on the sofa. You couldn't even be bothered to feed Star. I did that a couple of times, yes. She had a walker and Star was kept in it for hours on a surface where she couldn't move. It wasn't hours. She could get round in it on the carpet. It. Holly is wrong about that. She could get round on it. The wheels didn't work on the carpet, did they? They did. Holly had no reason to lie. She wasn't in it for hours and she liked playing in it. You met Samantha Brookhill in November. The end of October. You were obsessed with her. More interested in going out with her than spending time with Star. Yes. You sent hundreds and hundreds of messages to each other. Yes. In this trial, there's been complaints about messages missed out. This is only a tiny fraction of the thousands and thousands of messages you sent. And each message takes time, doesn't it? Yes. So the video of Star going up the stairs, that's an example to us of you being on your phone while she was doing something potentially dangerous. I was on my phone a lot, yes, but at the time I didn't think it was a dangerous thing. It didn't take long for Samantha Brookhill to start talking about changing Star's surname to Brookhill, did it? She meant mentioned it a couple times. She didn't like Hobson being in the name. She said Jordan wasn't really the father. Yes. Acting like Star was her child. Yes. Do you remember the 999 call where she said, it's my partner's daughter, it's my little girl as well. I've bought her up. She was very keen to be thought of as a parent. I would say so, yes. After Star died in the hospital, she was saying certain people, Anita and David, couldn't go to the hospital and Star should be buried near her mother. Yes, I never met her brother. Did you decide Star had to have stricter conditions to live in? Savannah introduced the routine. Whether Star liked it or not? Yes. Again, Holly said there was times she stayed at Yvonne's. Would Holly go into your bedroom to check on Star when you were in the room? Do you remember her coming into your room? Yes. She said Samantha Brookhill told her to leave Star when she was crying. I remember it once. Holly, she's only young. She had Star at her home to give her more protection and look after Star better. She had her at her home, but no, that's not right. Star would be left to cry herself to sleep. Yes, that happened. Savannah said to leave her. Holly said in the referral, Star had some bruises and she looked fed up. She had some bruises, but she wasn't fed up. 
Where were the bruises from back then? I don't know. What led up to you giving Star to Anita and David? I was at my mum's. She had not come home from a night out. That morning, Savannah had left me and sent me a video of her and Becky, Endicott, in the car. Doing what? Just messing about, hugging. Savannah was lifting her top up. What did that cause you to feel? I was upset. Was you very upset about your life then? And you thought it would be better if there was a time without Star? When my granny Anita came up, she said I needed time to sort myself yeah. out. Anita told us when Star arrived at hers, she had the most awful nappy rash. She had nappy rash, yes. Awful for a baby, caused by a baby not being cared for properly. Had you been neglecting Star? You could say that, yes. How often did you see Star when she was with Anita and David? Two or three times a week. What did you notice about Star? She was normal. She was happy. She got chubby. Anita said she couldn't believe a child could be depressed, but Star was depressed. Was she right? I don't believe Star was properly depressed, but she did look a little down. Unhappy. Anita said she had the odd bruise from crawling, but nothing like she had before. And she was playful, happy and laughing more. Did you notice that? Yes. Children do get bruises sometimes, but tell us, how had Star got bruising before she went to Anita's? I don't know. And why when she went to Anita and David, the bruising became much less frequent? I don't know. Had you and Samantha Brookhill been abusing Star? I had definitely not, no. Then you took Star back, went to Anita's and decided to have Star for a couple of hours? Yes. You and Samantha Brookhill were back together at this point? Yes. Samantha Brookhill said to you, look what happened with Ben. If you don't get Star back, they'll keep her. That was mentioned. That was an awful thing to say. Yes. Because it wasn't true. They took Ben in from birth when his real mother gave him up. And before he was born, his mother said she didn't want him. Yes, yeah, she said she didn't want a boy. They gave him a home, a stable upbringing, brought him up like their own son. He had a great upbringing. So when Samantha Brookhill said all these things, did you not say that was wrong? No, but I knew it wasn't true. Did what Samantha Brookhill was whispering in your ear cause you to take Star away from Anita and David? No. You bought Star a new cot and new bedding? Yes. And you told us when you put Star in the next cot and bedding, she looked adorable? Yes. So is that what made you, instead of taking Star back, you kept her instead? Yes. As simple as that? Yes. You did that in the spare of the moment. You changed Star's life forever. I took her back, yes. I'd said I'd have her for two hours, then a night, then took her back for good. Anita, David and Ben were expecting Star back that night. Yes, but I did tell them. Did you talk this through with them beforehand so Star wasn't upset by the change? No, I didn't say that to them. Did you suggest having Star gradually so it was easier for Star? My granny said that, but I said no. Was that your own choice or did you discuss it with Samantha Brooks? Mine, I decided it. Any thought to what it was like for Anita and David? No, my nana said whatever I wanted Star back, I could have her. Did you think about the impact on Ben? No. One minute they were looking after Star at your request, then with no warning you took Star away from them? Yes, I sat down and talked to them after I took her, when I went round to collect Star's things. Did you have any complaint about how they looked after Star? No. Mr McDonald showed the photo of Star having a bath in the sink at Anita and David's. Does she look happy, contented, chubby? Yes. Why didn't you tell Samantha Brookhill she didn't know what she was talking about when she said Star would be stolen? I don't know. We've heard different times about when that happened. When do you think it happened? Around Easter, April time. Almost as soon as you got Star back, she started getting bruised again. A video of Star is played in court. A bruise is visible on her forehead. The video is from April. She looks happy there, but how did she get that bruise? I don't know. Were you back with Samantha Brookhill by then? I'm not sure. David said he saw Samantha Brookhill's car outside your mum's and he got really worried. He was right to be worried. A video now from April 18th. The video of Star pulling Smith's hair. A small bruise is visible on Star's forehead. You see that bruising? Yes. How did she get that? I don't know. Why was she getting bruised when you took her back? I don't know. Then there were a whole series of videos where you were frightening Star, making loud noises when she was asleep. The first video is from me. I'm evil, aren't I? That's what you say, isn't it? Yes. Why did you video that? I sent that one to Savannah. 
What was the purpose of that? Star was asleep and it wasn't her nap time, so Savannah asked me to show her Star. She was fast asleep. Yes. This was at 11.17 a.m. First of all, babies need their sleep. It's very, very important. Was Star having difficult sleeping at this stage? I'm not sure at this stage. I don't want to guess. What did it matter if Star, a baby who needed sleep, and was asleep why did she have to be woken up it wasn't her nap time it wasn't her pacific nap time is that why she had been woken up had she just fallen asleep i think so yes it was wrong of me to do that let's assume she needed to be woken up you agree now that was cruel to do it's bad enough waking her up but it's even worse she's frightened out of her sleep she's upset yes it clearly upset her. She was fast asleep and you shouted at her. She clearly doesn't know what's happening and just immediately starts crying. What does it say on her romper suit? Happy and tiny, there's a picture of a mouse. Why didn't you wake her up lovingly? I don't know. Why didn't you do that? It's your daughter. I don't know. You looked rather pleased with yourself in the video. You're smiling like you did something clever. Why were you smiling? I don't know why I was smiling. Why were you smiling? I honestly don't know. My dad did that loads of times with us. What, he woke you? He did it to all of us. He really did. Did you like it when you were a child? Did you think Star liked it? No, she looked upset. That's not the only time you did this to her. You did it lots and lots of times. Yes, I know. Why did your dad do it to you? He used to laugh. He didn't have Samantha Brookhill saying you shouldn't sleep at times. So was that to do with her or was that to do with you? For the nap times it was to do with her, but other times it wasn't for her. It's a pack of lies. No, he did do it with us. You sent it to Samantha Brookhill to prove you was being tough with Star. To prove you were enforcing her timetable. With her nap times, yes. Is that why you were smiling for Samantha Brookhill? Aren't I brilliant? Look what I'm doing to my daughter for you. No, not like that. What repeatedly happens is when you video star being disciplined, is you're constantly looking around to be on camera. Yes. To make sure you can send it to Savannah so she'll be pleased with you. Not to be pleased with me. At the time, did you not realise what you were doing might damage your daughter? No, not at the time. Are you seriously telling us you never thought that by scaring her in that way it would be causing damage? No, not at the time. There's a theme developing here. In all these videos of you shouting at her and making her stand at the wall, crawl up the stairs, it was to show Samantha Brookhill your love for her. Look what I'm doing for you to start. How brilliant I am to get in her good books and cement your relationship. And Star was the victim of your desire to show Samantha Brookhill how much you loved her. No, it wasn't at all. June June 19th now. Another video of Smith shouting at Star to scare her. Star is awake in this video. Smith laughs at the end. She's bemused. She's thinking, why is my mother shouting at me? What were you doing? Trying to make her jump. Your own idea of fun? It looked funny at the time. I didn't mean any harm by it. She has a bruise on her cheek there. Yes. A screenshot of a Facebook post is displayed now by David Fawcett. It's the, from this to this in five weeks, what's going on Frankie post. You got on well with David. He was a father figure for me. There's bruises on Star's face. This is June 20th. How did she get them? I couldn't tell you. I don't want to guess. I don't know. That's the day Jordan made his social services referral. Another photo now of Star. How did she get that bruise on her cheek? That was from the coffee table. As a result of Jordan's referral, a doctor at Briar examined Star. The only time Star ever saw a doctor taken by police and a social services representative. Yes. You said the bruising occurred by falling against the knob of a coffee table. Yes. You gave that explanation. There were some bruises on Star's legs. You said they were caused by a puppy. Yes, Star loved playing with the puppy. And the doctor accepted that. This was the third time you were referred to social services. Yes. Were each of these referrals not a wake-up call for you? I'm suggesting to you that bruises were caused deliberately. At every social services referral, you were convincing them they were malicious reports. They didn't like your relationship. Yes. And they accepted that, didn't they? Yes. On each time social services were referred and they closed the case, you thought, phew, I got away with that. No, I didn't think that. And Samantha Brookhill thought that too. I don't know, I don't what, know Savannah what Savannah was, was thinking. thinking.